so this is an exciting time of year. It's one of my favorite times of year because we got a honey flow just starting. Uh, we have the maple flow, obviously, in the spring, but depending on the weather, sometimes we can take advantage of that, sometimes not. But the blackberry flow is definitely our main one. And uh, side note, I uh, ordered some Dayton smokers, and I am just blown away at the quality difference between uh, the ones that I was getting from Man Lake uh, versus the Dayton ones. I definitely recommend the Dayton ones. I mean, just, just the feel of them, everything is just... Uh, a lot better quality and the pricing i can't say for sure off the top of my head but i want to say that the pricing really wasn't that much more um but i can't tell you i think it's like maybe eight dollars more or whatever anyways okay let's uh start assessing here first colony and uh bees are looking packed in there so and by the way, I've had some people ask me about these silver fish, if they do anything. I, not that I'm aware of. I mean, they, they don't seem to bother the bees any. Uh, okay, so should have pointed this out before I smoked them. But here's a couple of key things. So obviously we're seeing bees, a good amount of bees in between the frames across this whole box. So we know they need more space. The thing that also really excites me is look at that beautiful white wax. That's new. Whenever you're seeing that, look at that. See? That's all new wax. New wax. If you're curious, I'm not going to do it because <laughs> I don't want to work harder than I have to. But you can crack this box and just tip it back and just see where you're at weight-wise. I lied. I'm curious. Plus two, we can check. Do a quick little check here for swarm cells as well. Which hopefully we don't have any. Aha, but we do. And I know exactly the reason. And that is that they are, they are just, uh, they're out of room. And so, real easy. This is a, I'm trying to think now. This was actually our older queen uh, out of the, she was the 2019 one. So that makes sense. So what I'm going to do here, because I don't have my tripod, I'm going to smoke these down. Uh, here's those, if you're aware, let's see here, where did they go, aha, so here's one, if you're wondering what they look like, there's another one, so I'm going to go and uh, tear those down real quick, and uh, then we'll uh, come back and we'll super them. Okay, so just give you a little video update, you see these are some of the key reasons why they're wanting to swarm, see all of this pollen that they've been bringing in is taking up the space available space for her to lay and so it's just they're getting crowded i mean this is a great colony the uh the reason that this brood looks as spotty as it is is just because they're they're out of room and you got pollen mixed in here with the brood but uh, so what i'm doing just to give you a little update out of this this is the second box I took a couple of frames of brood, shook the bees off, put them in the third box that we'll be putting on here, and then put two empty frames of a drawn out comb in here so that immediately the queen has some room. It's kind of a form of checkerboarding. The only difference being is I didn't alternate the frames. These are the two new frames, but you can do that, just checkerboard them. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna take out a couple of frames and uh, got one shaking off here somewhere anyways one of these got to take a couple of frames out of here and do the same thing put them next to the two other frames i have there so we'll have four frames of brood and i'm going to take two new frames from the third box that's going on here and going to put them down in this first one and then uh, you know when looking for queen cells you have to make sure if you're looking if you're seeing swarm cells you can do one or two things you can look for the swarm cells in the obvious places which are usually you know between the first and the second box or you can uh, be really diligent which uh, you know if you have a handful of hives i would suggest doing that uh, and that is you know take every frame out shake the bees off uh, if you have an entrance like see here in this case i have to be really careful that if i shake bees off in the front it's on this side, so they can't accidentally go into the entrance of the hive next to them. 
but if you just have one hive or a couple of hives and they're a few feet apart, uh, you can just shake them in the entrance. The only thing is, and I made a mistake of not clarifying this in one of the previous videos, if you shake them off, make sure that they have a way of accessing the entrance. Even if you put sticks there or a board, something, so they can walk back up into the entrance. Otherwise, they'll form a cluster underneath the hive. I'm going to keep shaking bees. Whoops. Shake, shaking bees, and I'll uh, give you an update here in just Okay, so one last little update. Here's a new frame. Here's a new frame. Here's a new frame. Checkerboarding. Just giving giving that, uh, that brood chamber more space, relieve, relieving that crowded feeling. You know, uh, temperatures warm up. They have a honey flow. They're crowded. Perfect recipe for swarming. So the frames that we took out of here, and this is where I like using all deeps. Uh, I understand some of you are going to be using mediums, shallows for your honey supers. In that case, uh, what I would probably look at doing is seeing if you can't pull the side frames that are just pollen and honey. Pull those out. You can set them aside, uh, you know, wrap them in a plastic bag, uh, throw them in your freezer to kill any wax moths, and then you can use them if you need them in your operation in the future. Uh, if you throw them in the freezer for 24 or 48 hours, that kills any uh, wax larvae. But if you have a colony that's looking like this, the chances of wax larvae or wax moths getting in there to lay eggs is very minimal. So you can do that too. But anyway, so the frames I pulled out of here, they're in that third box that's going to go on top. Checkerboarded here a little bit too. Uh, swapped out a couple of frames. Here's the two new ones. So... This goes back on top, and then the third one, third box, goes on there, and then that's that uh, first colony taken care of. Here's another little trick, too, because traditionally, you put you use nine frames in a honey super so that it allows room. They're just easier to handle, because especially if you have a heavy honey flow, they have a tendency to puff out the comb on the frame. So we've got nine frames here, but uh, it's always good to center those frames or you can, you know, very meticulously go and space them uh, as much as possible. But, and this is just one way. I mean, there's some folks that, you know, start with 10 frames, and then as the wax is drawn out, they go back to nine. But uh, for our application here, uh, what I'm doing, I'm just centering the nine frames so that they've got a pretty even gap on both, both sides here. And uh, we'll just leave them be. Check them in about a week. Uh, whenever you have swarm cells like that, it takes them uh, 10 days to uh, build and cap queen cells. So if you're, you see queen cells like that, you go through the hive, you tear them down, uh, you know you've got at least eight to nine days uh, before you come back and want to check again. Hopefully this will uh, dissuade them uh, enough from that swarm impulse. Hopefully I didn't miss a queen cell. <laughs> it's always a possibility too. But uh, anyway, so let's go over here to our second hive. And the bees are just so happy today. They're just kind of hanging out. Beautiful. Need a new lid though. Once again, see that white wax? Beautiful. Just for the heck of it. Hang on. I'm gonna set my phone down here for a moment. I'm just gonna crack this second box and take a peek. Now this is a new queen, so shouldn't be as prone to swarming behavior. But this year, and you just this year bees have just been swarmy. Uh nothing that catches my well. nothing in there Let's see here. yeah see there's nothing there's no egg or anything so these girls are good we'll go and uh, go and throw a second box and you know if you're using foundation one thing that you can do is bait it's called baiting your box that you're putting on and all that is to do I'll show you. 
is say you know you pull a frame here that's drawn drawn comb from the box that you're going to be uh, supering above so let's pull this side one because there's a minimal chance of brood you don't want to separate the brood if you don't have to so okay so we take this one out and uh set it here and we pull a pull a frame out of our new box that we're going to be putting on there this will be the third box and we set this one right in the center of the new box and so because the bees are already actively working on that it just baits them to come up if that makes sense and so throw this frame from the third box back in the second and then we'll throw this third box on and there we have it so there's our third box on and uh <laughs> and you know here's the thing this lid this lid has definitely seen better days but uh, i'm gonna actually keep using it because it doesn't hurt for them to have a little upper entrance that little gap there actually uh this time of the year can help them when they're coming in from the field foraging depending on the temperatures and everything and the integrity of our boxes sometimes we'll actually offset our boxes a half an inch or whatever just to give that little extra ventilation for the bees third box and look at that there's bees now this one i'm a little bit more concerned about them possibly uh trying to swarm these bees over here are not thrilled with what i'm doing so let's check oh they got that glued down good let's check this one and see oh boy yeah there's okay so I'm gonna put the camera down and uh, do another operation here same process same process as the uh as that uh first one yeah this year has just been a swarmy year and um i don't uh, once i get in the hive here i'll know a little bit better what's uh what's making them want to do that uh chances are really good that uh yeah, they haven't swarmed yet. There's one There's one here that's capped. It's broken now. But still a good population of bees, so I think we'll be able to grab them and uh, keep them from their, keep them from their plant. And here's a key reason why you want to shake your, uh, shake the bees off of every frame when you're looking for cells. Because here's, here's a pair that, if the bees were on there, uh, the bees will oftentimes try to protect the cells even from their own queen, so just uh, got to be on the lookout once again I'm just shaking the bees in front uh, they have easy access to access the entrance there so they're just crawling right back in. so here is the finished product and when you do these kind of manipulations I mean where you have to shake the bees and everything else it's, it's stressful on them and so use lots of smoke keep them calm as possible um, so what I did here is I actually just pulled the two side ones put them in the third box took the combs two combs from the third box and uh just once again checkerboarded them just put them here and then we've got two frames here from the third box that i've switched out so just once again just opening space for the queen to lay so we're going to assemble those and then we're done and uh come back and check them again in about a week okay and there's our finished product <laughs> three boxes high and yeah, looking forward to seeing how they look in about a week because once again, blackberry bloom just just starting and uh, hopefully we get some good foraging weather. We just had about three days of rain, which uh, was really necessary. And so be curious to see what all takes place here over the next few days.